Well, good evening, church. We're so glad that you've come on out again. Mercer Baptist Church, hallelujah. Got some visitors tonight. We're so glad you're here tonight. Tonight, I am very honored. We have uh, Brother John Norville. I'm not sure if you know the Norville family, but uh, we are so honored that they are here, and they're going to lead us in some worship tonight. And uh, if you don't know this family, I would encourage you to get to know them because they um, are a blessing to me, and uh, I love you, friend. And uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you guys got to come out. But uh, once again, we have Dale Rose tonight, and this is going to be his last night. And then he's going to be coming back next Saturday. And uh, so we're just really hopeful for what God would uh, speak through him this evening as well. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, ask for his promptings and guiding and, and the Holy Spirit to be present. Amen, church? So let's, let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, tonight we just want to say thank you for your love. God, I thank you for my brothers and my sisters that are here to, to partake in this worship tonight with us. Father, you're the one that laid it on our hearts to do this revival. So, Lord, I pray first you revive my heart, refresh my heart. Lord, anyone that came out tonight, anyone that happens to watch this online right now, we pray that you would refresh us. The Holy Spirit, that you would fill us with your, your presence and your peace and your goodness. God, we say thank you. Thank you for loving us. God, tonight, I pray if there's somebody in the room that doesn't know you, doesn't know the security that we have in you of eternal life, I pray tonight would be the night of salvation. And God, we just give you all the praise and all the glory tonight. And all God's people said, Hear the bells ringing, the singing that we can be born again. I think they're singing with us. So for number three, I'm sorry. They might or, sound better than us, actually. I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was us. I mean. Hear the bells ringing, they're singing that we can be born again. Hear the bells ringing, they're singing, Christ is risen from the dead. The angel up on the tombstone said, he is risen, just as he said.
is so great to be out here tonight, and uh, for me, it's good to be anywhere, because uh, a lot of you that are older will know what I'm talking about, so thank the Lord for his blessings on us. Go ahead. That's all right. We love to sing about the blood. everywhere a lot of people were not looking to the right place the answers Jesus has all the answers in the word so that's what we got to do so the name of this song is the answer is Christ Heard the questions, seen blank expressions, felt the pain that sin has caused. I've dealt with heartache, and I've watched the hearts break of families who suffered great loss. I've sometimes wondered about the stress we He is the hope for the hopeless, the water 
the giver of life. He is strength for the weary, love for those cast aside. He gives rest to the restless, freedom from fear. Things seem impossible, know that he's near. For all of the problems of life, the answer is Christ. You may be hurting and desperately searching for answers you can't seem to find. There's so many choices. You're wrestling with voices and you're looking for some peace of mind. Feeling the shame from past mistakes as the tears fall from your eyes. Well, don't be history. So it's amazing. God works in mysterious ways. These are Joseph's two children here, Elena and Adam Thomas. And uh, Adam Thomas got a birthday this week. He'll be nine years old Friday. So uh, It's getting old. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> well, everywhere we go, people want to hear this song. So, uh, and I love, we'd love to sing this song. It's a song about the New Jerusalem. And so, you listen to words of this great song. John saw a city that could not be hid. Oh yes he did, John caught a glimpse of a golden throne. Tell me all about it, go right on around the throne he saw the crystal sea. There's gotta be more, what will it be, I want to go to the city he saw, New Jerusalem. 
seven years ago, and we're looking forward to seeing her again, and uh, others that have gone on before us. You know, but until we get there, we got work to do down here. We're supposed to be about God's business, and sometimes it takes a lot for God to get our attention, you know, so that's what this song is about. Bethany and I was in, uh, we're in uh, North Carolina, was it Virginia, or Bristol, Virginia, yeah. And uh, we got to introduce this song. I think I'd heard it before, but not like it was that, that day. So you listen to the words of this wonderful song. Mm-hmm. 
I faced a mountain that I never faced before. That's why I'm calling on you, Lord. I know it's been a while. Lord, please hear my prayer. I need you like I never have before. Sometimes it takes a mountain. Sometimes it's trouble sea. Sometimes it takes a desert. To get a hold of me Your love is so much stronger Than whatever troubles me Sometimes it takes a mountain To trust you and believe Forgive me, Jesus I thought I could control Whatever life would throw my way But this I will admit brought me to my knees and I need you Lord I'm not ashamed to say sometimes it takes the mountain sometimes it's trouble see desert to get a hold of me your love is so much stronger than whatever troubles me to trust you and believe sometimes it takes a mountain to trust you and Sometimes it takes 
it's a mountain to trust you and believe. Talk about God getting to us. Whenever our hearts are changed from the old stone cold heart before we were saved, it's just like when they rolled that stone away when Jesus came out of the tomb. He rolls the stone away in our heart and gives us a new heart. So you listen to the words of this great song Love was in the room. <laughs> Filled the garden where he lay. Then the ground shook with power as the angel came and rolled that stone away. All the glory of the living God broke through to the darkness of the tomb. corner of my room. Love was in the rooms and new life was born where only death had been. Love was in the room and death and hell will never reign again. Broke through to the darkness of the tomb. The earth was still with its beauty, and love was in the room. Now this is some of us right here. I was trapped in sin and weakness, sinking ever deeper day by day. Then the blessed Holy Spirit came, touched my heart and rolled that stone away. All the glory of the living God broke through to the dark of the and the love of the Father came and filled every corner of my room. Love was in the room and new life was born where only death had been. was in the room and death and hell will never reign again when the glory of the living God broke through to the darkness of the tomb the earth was filled with its beauty and love was in my room Broke through to the darkness of the tomb. The earth was filled with his beauty, and love was in the room. Love was in the room. was in the room, love was in the room, amen.
We're going to sing one more before Brother Rose comes and preaches the word. This song talks about all that the Lord can do in our lives, and he can. Nothing is impossible with the Lord Jesus Christ. This song says, if you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. And if you got chains, he's a chain breaker. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. If you're trying to feel the same old hole inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to the things we know just not right. When there's a better life, there's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. receive it if you can feel it somebody testify testify if you believe it if you receive it if you can feel it somebody testify testify yeah. if you believe it if you receive it if you can feel it Somebody testify, testify, if you believe it, you receive it, you believe it, somebody testify, testify, if you got pain, he's a pain taker, if you feel lost, he's a way maker. I have a problem with that. My family doesn't have that. I'm envious. God bless you all. And couldn't have been a, two of the songs couldn't have been any better to fit the message, especially that last one, okay? I looked at my sermon records this afternoon. I've actually been in this area 
the media area 17 times now. And uh, that is a blessing. You all have put up with me. And uh, it's a joy to be with you. It really is. What was that? Yeah, I know. And guess what? I get the last word. <laughs> Isn't it great we can come to the house of the Lord and have a good time? A merry heart does good like a medicine. We should be able to come here and have more fun than they can have at any happy hour. If we would, I think more people would enjoy it. Church should be fun. We shouldn't come in, in, in here and have a long mule face. God never intended for that. A matter of fact, we with our Western mindset miss so much of what was humorous in the Bible. Many of the things that Jesus said were humorous, and we miss it. The kids loved him. Why did they go and climb up in his lap? I think he got down and played with them, frolicked with them, had a good time with them. I really do. Why is it that the world has such a misconcept of our Savior? They do, don't they? Is it because of us sometimes? Maybe. We should have fun. In the correct manner. December 22nd, 1885, a 16 year old girl was converted to Christ. She left her rich aristocratic background. She went to China and served for nearly five decades. Before she died, she made this statement. If I had a thousand lives to live, I'd live them all for the women of China. Who was that, ladies? Lottie Moon. That was dedication, wasn't it? Now, there's very few boarding schools left in our country. One of them is at Oneida, Kentucky. Now, we pronounce Tennessee, Oneida, Tennessee, but this is Oneida, Kentucky. It's a Christian boarding school. My last pastor in Kentucky was at Barberville. Dr. Barkley Moore died at the age of 52, but he, upon my invitation, would bring the choir from Oneida Baptist Institute to our church. I visited the campus and you didn't have to be around Dr. Barkley Moore any time at all until you realized that he was totally dedicated and sold out for the cause of Christ. One of those individuals that just put you to shame. Well, did you realize the Lord is looking for that from us? Turn to a very familiar text of Scripture. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Paul said, I beseech you, I beg you, I urge you, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God or because of God's mercy on your behalf, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, which literally means your spiritual worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. I, I, I'm going to get down to a little nitty gritty right here. This past Thursday in the Bible study at our business, I told them, I said, I get into some of our work vehicles and the radio's always on country music. I said, don't feed your mind with the things of the world. 
Now, I'm not saying that all other music is bad, but it's high time that we as God's children quit being transformed to the world and transform our minds by them being renewed with godly things. Now, that's just that way it is. How much do we feed ourselves? Why, if I had a diet of all that garbage that's out there in the world, I'd be in a mess. Young people, hear me out. I walked in the room. I looked at my emails. I get one news now. I called Melly. I said, I can't believe it. Lego came out. Did any of you hear it? Grover, did you hear it? With a set of Legos, LGBTQ. God help us as a country. And one person said to me in talking to them, they said, but that comes from another country. It doesn't matter what country it comes from. It comes from hell is where it's coming from. To try to bombard the minds of our young people with garbage like that, something is wrong. It breaks my heart to see it. But that's not the text. I could preach from verse 2. That's not my text. I beseech you, therefore, circle that word, therefore. Someone said any time Paul used the word therefore, you need to stop and understand what it's there for. And so we do. Now, he belonged to the Sanhedrin. Paul had to have been married at one time. Did you all realize that? He did. Now, a lot of people have a hard time with that, but you go back and study it, he did. Whether she divorced him when he became a believer or whether she had died, we don't know. But belonging to the Sanhedrin, he could have presented an argument. He could have been a lawyer like you couldn't even begin to imagine. So that's what he's doing in Romans. He's built his case all the way through. And in chapters 1 through 3, he has declared Jew and Gentile, everyone a sinner under the condemnation and the judgment of God. You may look at that this next Sunday morning. But then in chapters 4 and 5, hallelujah, he says we can be justified. And how is it? By works? No, it is by faith and faith alone. Chapter 6, 7, and 8. I preached it Sunday morning. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Our sanctification. He's trying to set us apart to be what we need to be. Transforming us into the image of Christ. Chapters 9, 10, and 11. Vital. Very vital. It's dealing with Israel. And in dealing with Israel, chapter 9, they were received. Chapter 10, they rejected. Chapter 11, they're going to be restored. And if you're ever anti-Semitic, I'll stick a dirty sock in your mouth. We better never be against Israel. I have a problem right now. We do not have an ambassador to Israel. Did you, was you aware of that? You read Genesis 12. God will bless those that bless Israel and will curse those that curse Israel. Bottom line. Bottom line. I've got a Jewish friend, 90 something years old. I've tried every way in the world to lead him to the Lord. I've been up with him till midnight. Respect them. Because God's going to restore them. When the fullness of the Gentiles is come, then the natural branch will be regrafted in Romans 11. 
How many of you remember the book? My mom read it to me. Brother Her of your chinny chin chin, the three little pigs. You remember it? Hey, we as Gentiles, it's by the hair of our chinny chin chin that we're going to get into heaven. So we better be deeply grateful. But then, because of all of this, he said, I plead with you. I beg you. I urge you. I beseech you, therefore. Because of all of that. And then the rest of the chapters is dedication. And he starts it right here. To be dedicated to the Lord. Chapter 12 is the spiritual gifts. And I've got a complete series of teaching on the spiritual gifts. I- I'm going to throw this out to you. Do you know what your spiritual gift or gifts are? It's our responsibility as the children of God to discover our gift, develop our gift, and to deploy our gift or our gifts. It really is. And if you're not doing that, something's wrong. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Are we submitted? Are we surrendered? Are we dedicated to him? When we reflect upon what he's done for us, and that's the first point tonight, we need to reflect upon our redemption. God sent forth his son to redeem those that are under the law, to rescue those that are under the law. Redeem means to buy back. He bought us back. Nat Spencer and his brother were tremendous athletes. Nat was the better swimmer of the two. They were walking along the shores of Lake Michigan one night, and the Lady Elgin, a steamboat, had 323 passengers on it. That night they heard the cries of the people as the Lady Elgin started sinking. Nat Spencer, in the dark waters, heroically swam and saved 23 of those passengers that night. But as Paul Harvey would have said, and now for the rest of the story, he became paralyzed and an invalid because of it. But the sad part was not one of the 23 ever turned back to give Nat Spencer a helping hand. Remember the ten lepers? They had to stand afar off and cry, Unclean! Unclean! And Jesus held them, Go show yourself to the priest! How many turned back? One. Could it be said of us that only 10% turn back and dedicate ourselves completely and wholly to the Lord? Think about it. We must reflect upon our redemption, and in our redemption, we need to understand that we were purchased. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but by the precious blood of the Lamb that was without blemish and without spot. You all sing about the blood tonight. I can't sing now, but one day I'll out sing every one of you. I guarantee you. And what am I going to see? sing? Those of you that's heard me preach, you know what it's going to be. Worthy is the Lamb to receive riches and honor and glory and majesty. Because he's redeemed us unto himself out of every kindred nation and people and tongue. And how's he done it? By his blood. I want you to know the blood is not glory. It's glory. The scarlet thread of redemption is seen from Genesis to Revelation. Any that want to remove the blood, it's not the gospel. We were purchased. And then in our redemption, we were removed. Removed from under the judgment of God. There is therefore now no condemnation, no judgment to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. 
I've been removed. What do I deserve? I deserve the wrath of God. When Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And God turned his back upon his son. And for three hours there was darkness on the face of the earth because God cannot look upon sin. And he that had not sinned, God made him to be sin for us who never sinned that we might be made the righteousness of God. Let me tell you, I've been removed from out of under the judgment of God because my great Redeemer took my judgment for me. He said, greater love has no man than this than a man lays down his life for his friends. Wow. We were purchased. We were removed. We've been rescued. Christ gave himself for us that he might deem us or rescue us from all iniquity. to make us a peculiar people a people of his own that we should show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light do we show forth those praises we've been rescued I was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore Seeking to rise no more. But hallelujah, the master of the sea heard my despairing cry and reached down into the depths of sin and rescued me and pulled me out of hell. Shouldn't we be thankful? We've been purchased, removed, rescued, and then we've been released. Do you remember in John 8, Jesus said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The religious folks stuck out their chest. (laughs) We're Abraham's descendants, we're Abraham's seed. And how can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus said, he that commits sin is the servant of sin. Don't ever get in your mind that when our states legalize marijuana, that that sets people free. Don't ever think when our country, under a former president, pushed in same-sex marriage, that that is free. That's not freedom, that's bondage. Because it is sin. You get my gist? I hope you do. But Jesus went on to say, If the Son therefore shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. I don't know the exact spot, western Tennessee. A young lady stood on the auction block. The bidding went higher and higher and higher. She stood there with disdain and anger, her eyes flaring and flaming, and wouldn't we? Wouldn't we? We would. Finally, the auctioneer said sold. Everyone was amazed at the price that had been paid for that young lady. She stepped down off the auction block. The papers were handed to the guy that had bid the high price. He was a Baptist preacher. To her amazement, he took those papers and he ripped them up. And he said, young lady, I've just bought you to set you free. She fell down and said, I'll serve you the rest of my life. Isn't that what our Savior did? He paid it all. All to him I owe. He paid the debt I could not pay. Shouldn't I bow down and worship him 
and offer myself as a living sacrifice. If we will reflect upon our redemption, then we must respond in total dedication. Now my daughter's now 27. Three little kids. But she was, wasn't two years old. And she had the croup, and we had taken her to the doctor. No, she wasn't even a year old. I'll get it straightened out. We were in Texas. Maybe nine months old, somewhere through there. And she was sick and feeling bad, sort of like I am now. And I would walk the floor with her, and she was fine. I would sit down, and she'd start crying, and she'd jerk and jump and pull my ear. I'd get up and walk. She was fine. That went on for minutes after minutes. My dear wife Millie looked at me and said, I can't believe it. She's not a year old and already has you wrapped around her little finger. <laughs> but the question I have, speaking metamorphically, are we wrapped around the finger of Jesus? If so, we need to submit to his lordship. You know the two terms, Savior and Lord. When I'm leading in the prayer of commitment, the sinner's prayer as we refer to it, I always make sure Lord Jesus. Savior and Lord. Now, Wayne picked on me. I was going to pick on you, Pastor. But he, he, I, and I was going to use Jenny. But since he spouted off, he gets it. Now, what if Wayne went in and said, Patsy, you're number one. Woo! But Judy's number two. Carolyn's number three. <laughs> this one's number four, and that one's number five. Patsy! It wouldn't be the iron skillet or the rolling pin, it would be the 38 kaboom! <laughs> Am I correct? Yeah, I know. But aren't we guilty of doing that in our Christian life? On Sunday morning, we say he's number one. But what about Monday at the job? What about Saturday on the lake? What about the ball field? See, the Bible says that in all things, he might have the preeminence, not just part of our life, every aspect of our life. See, we must respond in total dedication, and that means we submit to his lordship. And then we render to his leadership. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and I give unto them eternal life, and they what? Follow me. Is it always easy to follow Jesus? No, I talked about dying to self last night. And we cannot consider ourselves, our lives dear unto ourselves. I was crossways with a deacon in our hometown. I told him the truth. I'd have been okay if I'd have stopped there. But I went and blabbed to four or five others. You ever done that? Boy, isn't it so easy to do that? It is, isn't it? Wanting to elevate ourselves to put someone else down. Aren't we all guilty of that? I was in revival and the Lord convicted me. He said, you've got to apologize to him. The next week on Tuesday, I think it was, I walked into a building supply. 
He was going out the door as I went in. The Lord said, there he is. I said, Lord, not that soon. <laughs> but I had to turn and do an about face and go out and tell him what I told you was the truth. But I was wrong in saying it to others. Boy, I had to bite my pride off. I still do all the time. And as a rose, I, I've got a fight in me too much sometimes. I know that. But isn't it hard to surrender to the leadership and apologize to someone? Pray for my wife's family. I think we're going to have a reconciliation July the 3rd on that Saturday. It's been several years since some have seen others. Just pray for that. It won't be easy. It won't be easy. But I hope it happens. But not only that, uh, we had a Gideon speaker at our church. He did a good job. Normally I would give 25. This has been several years ago. And that particular Sunday, the Lord said, give 50. Well, I'd done a revival that week, and uh, all I had after my mileage was $50. I said, Lord, you want me to give the $50? That's all I had after my expenses for the week. Small church. I go to any size. It doesn't matter. And uh, I argued with the Lord. Now, don't sit there and tell me you've never argued with the Lord. Haven't we all? Don't we all have that stinking, rebellious nature about us? But the Lord said, give it. I'll make it up. That night, I preached at an independent Baptist church in Tennessee. An hour from home, I preached and the pastor said, I want Dale and Millie to come and here's the offering plate. Give them an offer. After they all filed through, shook hands with us, he handed it to me. I, he said, I think there's $596. I thought, 10 times. Wow. And I argued with you this morning, Lord. It's not always easy, is it? But see, if we'll reflect upon our redemption, we must respond in a total dedication to him. When we come to understand what we have in him. I beseech you therefore brethren. Because of God's mercy on your behalf. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Paul didn't say a dead sacrifice. A living. By the way. Paul referred to himself as a servant of Jesus Christ. Do you realize Jude did the same? And Jude and James, his two half-brothers, did not believe on him until after his resurrection. You know what term they were using? We're a bond slave. See, in Deuteronomy, if a Hebrew became in dire straits financially, they could sell themselves as a slave to another Hebrew. And at the end of the seven years and in the year of Jubilee, they had to give them seed and livestock and let them go, but they would pierce their ear with an awl, signifying they were a free man. But they had chosen to stay as a servant. That's the term Paul uses. That's the term Jude used. The offering plate was being passed on a Sunday morning. The little boy did not have a penny in his pocket. But he found a piece of paper and a pencil. And he wrote three words. I give myself. He signed it and dropped it in the offering plate. Not a dead sacrifice as they gave in the Old Testament, but a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable service, and it literally means which is your spiritual worship. We've not worshiped until we give ourselves.
to it. I'm, you may have heard me tell this before. <clears throat> uh, Texas was tough. I grilled a lot of chickens. Coming home one time, we, the four years that I was in seminary and pastoring, we would come home one week in the summer and one week at Christmas. Didn't have a real vacation. I remember coming home one time and I had a coupon for Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I stopped somewhere to get the bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken and they gave me a hard time. They said, that's not in this area. I said, this coupon doesn't say that. It doesn't say what area. They had to cough it up at the price the coupon said. We stopped at a park or the rest area somewhere and ate our chicken. So it wasn't always easy. There were tough times. But we returned home, lived at my mom's for eight months. You know, it takes a lot of love to let uh, you and your wife and three kids live there for eight months while you're building a house. <laughs> I, 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 did, I hadn't thought about that, but boy, that hit. That's apropos. Do you know his son-in-law is living with him? <laughs> Take special grace. <laughs> a lot of it, a matter of fact. I'll, I'll hit that next thing. <laughs> but anyway, we had three-quarters acre lot, land lot. When we'd sold out to go to Bible college and seminary, and for that nine years, it grew up. Well, the boys and I, with the chainsaw and the axes and everything, cleaned it up. We had piled the brush up. I walked up through a lot, and some folks said, what do you want? I said, 3,000. They said, get us a deed made. Landlocked. But it joined them. Now, here's the amazing thing. I've since bought their lot plus that one plus another lot back and other properties around it. Isn't it amazing how God works? But anyway, that $3,000, we went to Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge for two nights and three days. <laughs> and my boys have always been consistent and persistent. We'd be going up and down the stretch and they wanted to try it. Bungee jumping. And so I finally gave in. You know, when they just nag and nag, you finally say, okay. Well, they had a special deal. The more you bought, the cheaper it was. I'm Jewish. I like a good deal. So I paid the price. They weighed us, put a harness on us and a tag on us. We climbed those flights of stairs. The first boy went, no problem. The second one went, no problem. It was my time. The young guy working said, wait a minute. I had a different color tag. Had a little more around the waist. He had to get a heavier cord. I walked out to the edge. I was holding to the rail. Millie was filming it. <laughs> I was breathing deeply. I pulled back. The young man looked at me like, oh man, if you're going to go, go. I leaned out a little farther, I pulled back. I finally plunged head first toward the ground at that big balloon, and here I was bouncing up and down. <laughs> would I do it again? No. <laughs> but would I make the plunge and give my life to Jesus again? Absolutely in a million times over. And would I surrender to preach again even though I rebelled from age 12 or 13 until I was 20? You better believe it. You'll never regret dedicating yourself to the Lord. And what else can we do once we reflect upon what he's done for us? Tonight, I don't ask you to get a piece of paper and sign it. But I ask you to stand up as soon as we start to sing. When you come to this altar, you come to one of these front pews, you sit here, you bow down, and you say, Lord, I'm signing my heart 
over to you because I've reflected on what you've done for me. I'm presenting myself as a living sacrifice. Let us stand. Lead us in the invitation. This altar is yours. These offering plates are here. Will you come symbolically saying, offering myself, that's my spiritual worship, as a living sacrifice. A strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and pray, find in me thine all you in all. If you've never given your heart to Jesus, Jesus don't hold back. He's paid it all, he all he to him he I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find thy power and thine alone. Can change the leper spots and melt the heart of stone. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. For nothing good have I whereby thy grace to claim. I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's Lamb. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin back. had left a crimson stain. All he asked he is for us. washed he it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, Jesus died my soul to save. My lips shall still repeat, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Amen, church. Amen, amen. I'm blessed. Are you blessed? I am blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. That was a good word. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to do something Brother Dale doesn't want to do, but I'm, I'm going to pass the offering plate. I know you've given your heart to the Lord, but uh, we want to take up an offering every night to uh, bless those that have came out. So if I could get two of the men, Mr. David, Mr. Tim, 
And uh, I'm going to turn it back over to my brother here and his family. They got one more song that they wanted to close with, but uh, you, you can have a seat. Go ahead and have a seat. We just want to say thank you for coming tonight. And Have you been blessed tonight? Amen. 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 We're so glad you came out. Hey, tomorrow night, again at 6.30, um, continue to invite your friends and family to come out and join us. Yeah. But Brother John, thank you for joining us tonight. Man, I've been so honored. Thank you, friend. Thank you. Amen. Brother Dale, thank you so much. Brother Dale is going to be going back to Kentucky for a few days, but he's going to be joining us again next Saturday and Sunday. So looking forward to having you again, my friend. Amen. He's actually got some... Um, brochures and stuff in the back. He's got a really neat handout. It's free of charge, and it's how you can actually witness to somebody. So would you grab one of those on the way out and just read that? And if you're not really sure how you should witness to somebody, that's a great, it's a great tool, um, great resource. Amen? Amen, church? Glad you came, and uh, we look forward to you tomorrow. Well, I'm going to turn this over. If you guys would close this out, thank you so much for joining us. You guys have such a sweet voice. Amen, church. Amen. heard at the tomb that day just shuffling of soldiers feet as they guarded the grave one day two days three days it passed could it be that Jesus had breathed his last Could it be that his father had forsaken him, turned his back on his son, despising our sin? All hell seemed to whisper, just forget him, he's dead. But then the father looked down to his son and said, Arise, my love, arise, my love, the grave no longer has a hold on you, no more destiny, no more suffering.
Sin, where are your shackles? Death, where is your sting? Hell has been defeated. The grave is now hold the King. Arise, my love, arise, my love. The grave no longer has a hold on you. No more destiny. For suffering, arise, arise, arise. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you, Carl. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah, I sure would. Thank you. Father, we just thank you for this night. Thank you, Lord, for blessing our hearts and, Lord, cutting our hearts to the quick, God, with this message. And thank you, Lord, for Brother Rose. And we just pray you continue to bless his ministry wherever he goes. Lord, thank you for his energy and how you use him in a mighty way. And Lord, I thank you for my family. I pray you continue to be with us as we try to convey your message through music. And Lord, uh, we thank you for each person here tonight. And we pray, God, that we would go away from here better than we came. Thank you for this church uh, having this revival this week uh, when many churches do not even think about having revivals. But, Father, thank you so much for this church, for Carl, God, leading this church. We pray for him and his family and for all the families here at this church. Be with us as we leave this place. Keep us safe. And, and Lord, uh, just pray that the rest of this week, God, would be a wonderful week for you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>